Key restrictions are being relaxed in the U.S. The U.K. approves the world's first dual COVID vaccine targeting the original virus and the newer Omicron variant. Join us now, Dr. Jay Varma, former advisor to Mayor Bill de Blasio during the COVID pandemic. Also now the director of Wild Cornell Medicine Center for Pandemic Prevention and Response. Dr. Varma, good to have you with us. Hi, Lori. Thank you for having me. So let's address first the UK green lighting this so-called next generation dual COVID booster. It, does it target the BA4 and BA5, the ones that we're so concerned about? Uh, yeah, so this is going to be challenging, I think, for, for the viewers to sort of catch the information correctly because there's a lot of, of moving pieces here. So what the UK has decided to do is to create a booster vaccine based on that original Omicron strain, you know, the one that really swept through New York in, in December and January and made a lot of people sick. The U.S. has taken a slightly different approach, and it's trying to create a booster for the fall that's based on the most recent variants, what we call BA4 and BA5. Um, and the sort of scientific consensus out there is that any version of an Omicron booster, whether it's the U.K. or the U.S. version, is going to be better than just getting a, a regular, um, you know, vaccine booster. We just don't know how much, and there's a lot of debate, and we're going to just really have to see how this plays out in the real world. So the one that's being worked on here in the United States, that's a Moderna one? Yes, correct. Okay, so will it be ready in the fall? And if the one in the U.K. is available here, how do we decide which one to get? Yeah, um, you know, my expectation is that, but I don't know this for a fact, but my expectation is that Moderna is only, uh, you know, creating one booster for the U.S. market. And this is because there was a lot of debate uh, with the FDA and CDC back at the, you know, in uh, April and May about what type of booster vaccine to create. And the scientific consensus here in the U.S. was that it should be based on this BA451. Um, the current word out of the federal government is that they expected this to be available sometime in September. Uh, we just don't know exactly when. Um, and this is one of the concerns that scientists like myself had. You know, the question is, you know, should we create a booster that's going to be ready like right now, which would have been based on the original Omicron strain, Right. Or do we create the most up-to-date version? Um, and I think the consensus out there is that either of these vaccines is going to provide better protection when we expect a winter wave. Uh, we just don't have a really good way to say exactly how much so, better it's going to be. So even if we have this winter wave, we're seeing so many regulations and restrictions ease. We just had the story about the cruise lines that are starting to ease up uh, last week here in New York. We also saw some of the mandates eased up as well. You worked with uh, Bill de Blasio when he was the mayor. So are we relaxing things too much right now? Well, you know, I think there's been this big movement across the political spectrum and also across most of the country, you know, to move away from the notion of this collective, we're all in this together to, uh, you know, we're on our own to do this. You know, my personal feeling has been all along that I'm okay with that shift if there are more efforts for government to make high quality masks available everywhere, tests available everywhere, and to have some, you know, vaccine requirements, particularly in healthcare worker settings and schools and places like that. Um, so I'm okay with the rollback of a lot of the mandatory testing requirements. Right. Um, and I also feel strongly that, you know, there is an opportunity now for people to have some individual choice in these. Um, but I do think of all of the things people can do, getting vaccinated and staying up to date is the single most important thing because we know that's going to relieve the pressure on our clinics and our right. hospitals and that's a shared resource I, we all need to protect. I don't want to let you go without talking about polio. If we should be getting shots, how much danger we're in? Is it just for one isolated community? Well, right now, we know that there's two counties upstate and somewhere in the city, the health department has said where uh, that polio is circulating. We have to make sure that every child is up to date on their vaccines. Children are the highest risk group. Being unvaccinated is the highest risk group. This is not a disease we want to see come back here in the U.S. And the defense against it is really simple. It's getting a shot of that polio vaccine. And the same with monkeypox. Are you just as concerned? Well, monkeypox, uh, you know, I, I'm very concerned about the population that's most at risk right now. But one of the things that's reassuring at the moment is that despite over 10,000 cases in the U.S., you know, over 99 percent of them are associated with, you know, gay and bi men in their sexual networks. We need to address that. These 
this is an incredibly you know horrific illness to suffer and we need to help people with it but it's also reassuring right now that we're not seeing extended transmission outside of that network right now all right dr jay varma joining us tonight on the six o'clock news good to have you on as always thank you for such great information hey thank you Larry.